Hello guys, so Lucky Jake here and so for today's vlog, we will be talking about two very important uh, safety system on our main switchboard or also in our power management system. These are the preferential trip and the reverse power trip. So in this video, I'm going to show you on how to do the reverse power trip in a simple way and the second is we will be fixing the preferential trip trouble that we had on our main switchboard so before that let me explain to you first what is reverse power trip. So reverse power trip is a protection on our generator wherein to avoid the generator to become a motor. As simple as that. Let's not go on more technical matter but this is just to uh, protect our generator to become a load or as a motor. So the reverse power trip has its settings. Normally, it is 8 to 10% of the nominal load. As you can see, the nominal load on our generator is around 2,200 kilowatts. And the settings for our reverse power trip is 10%. It means that once our running generator goes below negative 220 kilowatts, then the reverse power trip circuit will activate and will trip our breaker. So right now we're having around 1,186 kilowatts on our generator number 2. And we will do the testing of this reverse power trip. And to do that, we need to run one more generator to shift all the load. So the first thing that we need to do is to put our control on the main switchboard. And we will be doing the testing on our generator number 2. And the next thing that we need to do is to lower the load on the generator number 2 in a slow manner. As you can see, the load is now slowly going down. And we will continuously be doing this until we will reach the settings that we have on the board. It is imperative that you should know the settings on your system so that you will not get rattled once you reach the negative values. Once these values goes to negative 220 kilowatts, then the circuit will sense it and will trip our breaker. So this is how simple to do the reverse power trip. And let's move to the next topic. So preferential trip is a protection on our generator or on our bus bar wherein if we have an overload or high load and the uh, bus bar cannot accommodate that load then the preferential trip will activate the activation of preferential trip should not affect the operation of our propulsion system as well as our bridge or navigational equipment it means that the breakers for the non-essential load like the fans, the reefers, there are other loads that are running or connected to the preferential trip circuit, then all this breaker, then all this breaker will trip and it will reduce the load so that the operation of the vessel or the propulsion system or our main engine will still be okay and we, it will not cause any blackout part of our plan maintenance system is to check the preferential trip so today we will be simulating this preferential trip where we will uh, manipulate the load percentage on our pms system and so we did the changing of the load percentage limit on our power management system and then we got the preferential trip on our alarm and monitoring system but the problem is that the breakers on our main switchboard did not trip. So we repeat the process and as you can see, 
the trimer is activated and the breakers did not trip. So we need to find out what is the cause. So before we proceed, we need to double check the manual. And according to the manual, we have this first stage preferential and the second preferential. We will be focusing on the first trip because this is the first that will be activated once we have abnormal on the pass bar. And the timer 5071 plays an important role in this circuit. So we have two ways on how to activate the first preferential. The first one is once you have abnormal on the circuit breaker. So this 57 A and T12 will be the one that will activate the timer but this is on to our A circuit air circuit breaker whereas what we are doing actually right now is the activation from the power management system which is uh, 86 AP we are manipulating the load on the bus bar and then this switch will activate as per the control from the alarm and monitoring system and then it will activate the timer 5071 once this one is activated and then from from this the contacts will be the 5071 terminals number 9 and 11 so once this is closed 57x1 will activate and let us check the 57x1 as as for manual we need to go to f12 d e and f so this is the f12 e d e and f and 57x1 57x1 and 57x1 and this will be for this shunt circuit connected on to the feeder panel and to the gsp and so for now we will we need to activate this 57x1 so the first thing that we need to check is this switch 9 and 11 so come on let's go so these are the timers for the first preferential and for the second preferential in order for us to check the contacts 9 and 11 we need to activate again the preferential trip and we will not reset it in this situation it means that we can measure the contacts of 9 and 11. Consulting the manuals, we need to measure the 11 of the timer 57T1 and then we can also measure this A1 or on the number 2 of the 57T1 timer itself. We should be getting around 110 volts. Once we have 110 volts, then we will move on to the F119 and A1 of the 57X1 contactor. After measuring the contacts number 11 and A1 or the number 2 on the timer, then we are getting around 115 volts. It means that we have a good supply on to the main line. So the next thing that we need to measure is the contacts number 9 and num A1 of the 57X1 or the F119 of this contactor. If we have 115 volts onto this one, it means that our contactor is defective. And if we do not have 115 volts onto these two lines, it means that our timer contacts is defective so after measuring our contacts 
for the contactor, then we do not have that 115 volts. It means that we need to change the timer. This is the main reason why the 57X1 is not activating because this 9N11 remains open even our timer is activated. So I remove the timer and check on our store if we have a spare. And luckily, upon checking, we found the spare of exact timer. I just copied the settings on the defective timers to the new one and installed it onto our system. So now we have a new timer and it's time for us to activate again the preferential trip. And this time we need to see the actual tripping of the breaker. A big shout out to our Terasaki technicians who are doing the manipulation of our load into our engine control room. Observe the green light which is the timer and then once we have the red light on that one, the breaker will trip. As you can see, the breaker trip and our circuit is back to the normal condition. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video. And this is your Lucky Jake and see you.